Hello, hello, hello. Hey, everybody. How's everybody doing today? I'm going to give it a couple of minutes, as always, to let people come into the social work live. So the time now is 832. And like I said, I'm going to give people some time before they come on in before I jump right into today's social work live. But hopefully everybody's um, is having a good day. I'm not sure if it was doing a lot of raining in where you are located in the world, but it definitely was doing a lot of raining where I'm at. So I'm going to give space and some time for people to come on in and chime on in, okay? All right, I'm going to talk a little bit before just kind of get some introductions out of the way so I can introduce myself to some and reintroduce myself to others. Um, so all the people that are currently tuning in live as of right now, my name is Melanie and you are watching Core Inspirations. This is a channel designed with social work students and professionals in mind. So you are definitely at the right place at the right time. On my channel, we share all things social work. And pretty much doing now, as it relates to social work, topics and topic matters and different things as it relates to you being a social work student and you being a social work professional. If you are new to the channel, definitely take your time, explore, look around, get acquainted. Um, and if you resonate with any of the things that may be shared or discussed today, definitely don't forget to subscribe. So that way you can be officially welcomed into the social work tribe. Don't forget to turn on your notifications so that way you are always notified whenever I upload. So that way you will be definitely in the known. But yes, you are watching Social Work Live. And today's topic, we have a good topic today, you all. A good, good topic. So let me just kind of do a review. Um, like I said, this channel is pretty much going into a new direction as it relates to social work sessions. We do it every Tuesday at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time and 8.30 p.m. That's the time that we do it every Tuesday. And we're coming in and we're discussing and having different topic matters. So if anyone that is just now joining, I see the numbers are coming in. I see people are coming in. Definitely, if you're comfortable, you can leave your name down below. And I would definitely welcome you in. And if you are not comfortable with doing that, no worries. You can just look and watch along. But for today's topic, we are talking about BSW versus MSW. Wait for it. <laughs> Today we're talking about six differences between the BSW and MSW program as it relates to my social work experience. So I did want to put a disclaimer out. I actually wanted to make sure that I um, just pretty much address that. So for disclaimers, the express experiences in this video tonight are that of my own, my very own, throughout the duration of me obtaining my BSW and MSW degree. My opinions and my insight is not inclusive to all. And it does not reflect nor speak on behalf of all social work programs, right? Because we know that in different locations, demographics, that the programs are different. So I just wanted to put that disclaimer out. But without further ado, let's jump right into it. Let's jump right into it. And periodically, you'll see me kind of looking down because I want to definitely make sure that I um, look over the chat as well, okay? So we're going to be moving forward within today's topic. So let's get in right into it. What's the differences between an MSW program and a BSW program? Does anyone kind of want to chime in on that? I see we have some people coming in. All right. 
So jumping right into it, if no one wants to actually expound upon their thoughts or opinions on it, we're jumping right into today's topic. So I would say the number one difference that I have actually observed in obtaining my BSW and MSW program in comparison to two, we got to start off with coursework, the rigor of the coursework and assignments. So I made like some notes here because I wanted to kind of be prepared for you all, not kind of, you know, but I wanted to be prepared for you all. So I'm going to be looking from that just to make sure that I'm staying on point and on topic. So as it relates to the BSW rigor course working program, I've noticed that there is more electives, more electives. Yeah, I've noticed that it's more electives. I see people coming in, so I definitely want to give space for that. But it is more electives. In general, I feel like there's more electives because, for one, just starting off, what is a BSW? So I want to kind of like not get too ahead of myself, too, because I did want to give space for people that may be viewing the channel who are inquiring also about the um, field of social work or the profession of social work and may have never really heard of it. So a BSW is a Bachelor's of Social Work, and it's a four-year, typically a four-year undergraduate degree, okay? And as it relates to my experiences of obtaining it, I was able to see that, okay, now that I was on the other side, you know, I graduated with my BSW in 2017, I took a year off, and then I went and obtained my, um, my MSW in 2019. So I have some insight in regards to what my experience was. So I definitely was looking back and I was reflecting and preparing for this particular session today. I say, yeah, number one is the rigor. It is definitely the coursework and assignments. There were definitely a lot of differences there, which something is going to make sense, right? Because the BSW is an undergraduate degree and the MSW is a massive of social work and it's a graduate level degree. And sometimes it's completed within one to two years, depending on what type of program you're doing and what type of um, duration and time, if you're going full-time or part-time or semi it depends based upon the time length that you go. But I noticed that it was way more electives. So traditionally, I came in really in an untraditional way. I came in with transferring credits from a community college. So I took a lot of my undergraduate courses and a lot of them were accepted. But when I got to the university level, there still were additional classes that I had to take. And I felt like like history... Um, there was one I took from African American, African American studies. Um, there was some just general classes and even with some of the classes that was required for my university, like studying habits, um, going through those particular cl classes that kind of like prepare you to help you to be able to be able to be on level, like on the college level university and kind of help you with some habits of how to retain and digest a lot of the, um, the um, lecturing, a lot of the actual coursework, because like I said, I was a non-traditional student initially when I came in with my BSW. So, I mean, working towards my BSW. So I had some work experience and then I went back to school. So to anybody that's actually in that space and they feel like, oh my goodness, I've been out of it, you know, out of the whole school process, you know, for a long time, you know, this video is definitely for you. Anyone that's a traditional student that may be having a BSW or MSW, I mean, like have a bachelor's degree or a master's degree in another field. If you're in the process of trying to figure out, you know, if you're wanting to move forward or if you're wanting to pursue or do a career change, this video is for anyone who's really naturally curious about like what is the difference between a BSW or MSW program and definitely for the BSW graduates to be or you're actually starting to enroll in your BSW program and you're wanting to see do you want to pursue an MSW or do you want to pursue another degree? This video is ideal for you. So like I mentioned, I was doing reflections and the electives to me were more geared towards a basic introduction to social work. So it gave you more workings behind what social work is, the just of what the social justice aspects are. And I noticed that it was more of a basic level, more of an introduction, like very general, not really specified in certain areas. I noticed that. Another thing, too, that I found out that I'm um, reflecting, that there was more prerequisite classes that I actually had to take. There was more prereq classes. There was more electives that actually had me go that I helped, you know, had to take before I was able to, um, you know, move further within my actual um, program. 
So I had to kind of get those out of the way. Like I said, even though I came in and I transferred in with some courses like English and some of my maths, I already had that out of the way. There were still additional electives that I had to take in order before I got to the actual social work courses. So that's what I mean when I say that. Um, as I mentioned, some of the information that was really taught, again, you have to think about it. You're in a BSW program, so you're at the, you know, more of an entry level space, more of a, you know, coming in with the basics and building from that. So I realized that it was just really basic and general information as more of an introductory to um, social work practices and social work procedures. Uh, one of the things that I would talk about, like, um, as being like a basic social work practice and procedure was the GI model. So that's the generalist intervention model. And it pretty much is like a step process of how to problem solve. It gives you some, you know, lead way and guidance as some people may not even be familiar with, you know, the social work field. And when I first started my program, I wasn't familiar with a lot of social work practices. So having something as, you know, a basic intervention that I can use as a guide, that was like so, so helpful. That was one of the things that really kind of stuck with me even um, post-grad, like post my MSW program. Because when I first learned it, I was so taken by it. I was like, hmm. It just really challenged the way I thought about problems. It challenged the way I looked at things in a more systematic approach. And um, I was able to kind of see, okay, well, this is, you know, this is the way I may initially need to look into a problem. And then as you go gradually and you go, you get to see a lot of the problem solving skill sets that social workers possess. And it's a basis. It's a start to really start you there. And then you build upon that knowledge as you grow in your knowledge and your education within the uh, profession. So I thought that that was something that was very, very interesting. Um, another thing when it comes to the rigor and the coursework and assignments, uh, what was different between the BSW and the, and the MSW program, I would definitely have to say that for the BSW level, it was highly focused on the National Association um, Code of Ethics as it relates to the preamble, um, the mission statements, competencies, principles, and um, the Code of Ethics. Like we were like, print that, carry it with you at all times. We were tested, like it was embedded throughout all of some of the assignments it felt like. Um, in my BSW program, but my particular program, they really wanted to stress the importance of really being competent and knowing what the code of ethics detailed. Like I said, as it relates to the principles, ethical standards, the preamble, the actual um, mission, you know, the competencies, and of course, the core values. Um, and then it's really important because what it's like the governing body of the work that we do. You know, it sets precedence of different things that we need to like really be mindful of. And then when you're coming into a profession and you're new to it, you have no idea like, okay, well, what am I, what is this profession, you know, what standard is it held by? You know, what is, you know, how you know how some people say you raise the bar high. What is the expectation for me being a social worker? You know, and it gives you really, it's a really a, a good guy, but it's also something that it's not always black and white. But when I first came into it, oh my goodness, I was like, okay, I need to know the values. I need to know the competencies. But as I was able to look back, I was able to see how it also blended in to all of the work that I had to do as it related to my internships and my field practicums. And we're going to get further into that within today's session. But I was able to see that the values was embedded in my coursework, was embedded in some of the assignments that I did. So my program did not play that. Like we really literally had to know it, you know, and not just like pull it out and say, okay, hold up, give me a moment. No, you had to know what the National Association um, of Social Workers preamble was, or at least be able to summarize it. But you definitely have to know your core values and the principles and competencies. That was just like a standard and expectation as being a social worker. And definitely at that entry level, it's really important that you know what you're being held to and what the, the profession, um, what the profession is being held to. So that was a lot of what I was seeing that was some differences. So the differences with the coursework and assignments for the MSW level in comparison to the BSW was more electives, I would say that the MSW program is really a continuation of the BSW. So the first, pretty much I could say, first semester, I had one class that was pretty much um, really dedicated to kind of like 
doing an overview. Maybe some people like myself took a year off from a BSW program. They graduated with their BSW, but they may have taken time off. So sometimes it's almost kind of like a little refresher. And uh, we kind of refreshed over some different concepts and theories, but we didn't stay there long because it was like fast selling. It was fast selling. I did an advanced standing um, program for my MSW for those that you, you not, don't know. So it was very, very fast paced. And initially we started off just refreshing with the BSW detailed as it related to some of our past skill sets that we learned, some of the previous concepts, but we definitely flew after that. So I feel that um, the coursework for the MSW, and you get it, right? Because it's an advanced level degree. So the coursework was definitely advanced. I feel like it really kind of dive. It was just more in-depth teaching. It was more in-depth knowledge of concepts, of theories. Um, I saw that I felt like the electives that I did have to take in the MSW compared to the BSW they were more specialty, like more specialty based. So what I mean by that is like some of the um, specialty electives, they offered courses versus like my BSW program, like English, math, history, different things like that. For the MSW electives, they were more specialized in where it encouraged a particular person to kind of think more concentration based. Like, what do you want to concentrate in? What area of practice would you like to go in? What particular population is ideal for you? So that's what I mean when this when I say that it was a more of a specialty. Um, it really put, it, it provided knowledge more direct as it related to child welfare courses around that in particular to that. Um, we also had a course that I took and fell in love with. Um, it was definitely in regards to mental health and like the cl the clinical track for people that may be wanting to kind of go the mental health route. Um, and then there was other things um, such as like micro practice or macro social work. Um, those were things that definitely I realized like these are specialty areas that I didn't get when I was in my BSW program where that was more of a generalist, more basic, you know, how to like a little touch of this, a little touch of that. My MSW program definitely um, really focused and lasered a little bit more into certain areas of concentration. So I felt like that was really, really beneficial. And um, it was really um, a place where I just felt like I fell in love with community development. It was a course that we were taking in grad school. And I mean, I loved it just to hear because I didn't know that that necessarily was like macro level work. And just to hear like some of the assignments that we were doing, some of the case studies that we were looking at as it related to community development, that was in that time span that I learned about that. So like I said, definitely more in-depth knowledge in particular electives. So that's a difference. Um, another thing too, as I related to um, talk about the differences between BSW and MSW programs, I felt that it led to more insight. Um, and then other areas of practice, not only as it related to the practice and the areas of practice or the different populations or the different levels, you know, with um, social work practice, but it gave more knowledge base of theories. So some of the theories, you know, we kind of learned, um, I learned like the strength perspective when I was in um, undergrad. That was really one of the big ones that I learned. I think the um, theories that we learned in BSW was more like psychology based. So you have your Maslow's, you have your Eric Erickson's. You kind of get a gist of what theories to kind of build things on. I do feel like my BSW prepared me for graduate level as it relates to knowing theories and being versed and being comfortable learning some of those things. But I only had... Um, I was only privy to a few of them, which is understandable. You're not going to have the same thing because then it wouldn't be a BSW program, right? It would be no need to go to an MSW program. But my MSW program, we took theories and concepts and perspectives to a whole nother level. And you had to know numerous um, theories and concepts. And then you had to know how they differed and how they were similar and when to use what, what theory, like what was the more ideal time to use one particular theory over the other or one particular concept or perspective over the other. I really enjoyed that because I was introduced to a lot of different theories that I wasn't, um, I wasn't knowledgeable of. So I felt like that kind of added to my, you know, my, um, you know, my toolbox, you know? So I thought those were some differences. And then also with interventions, with my BSW, we did different types of interventions, 
um, how to implement change at like a, you know, a macro level or at a, you know, a um, business organization. So we got into some of those um, interventions. I know some of you, and it's, it was pretty much more like models and interventions with BSW, and then it was more theories, concepts, perspectives with MSW. I can remember, uh, remember the Imagine model. So that was more like an acronym, and they broke it down for which, you know, which letter represented what in a particular you know, a system step process of how to implement change and how to put, you know, use this intervention in a macro level position, you know? So I felt like the connection of the two, it helped me build upon that because if I felt like if I didn't have that basics introduction of what an intervention was, what the GI model was, what the Imagine model was, I would have been kind of lost. Like, okay, it would have been hard for me to connect the dots, you know, as it related to using other forms of interventions and other forms of models, like on the MSW side, the logic model. That was a different model that we used as it related to maybe nonprofits and doing different community development work in the community. So there were definitely some similarities with certain things, but the MSW definitely was advanced um, information. So that is number one. Number one is talking about the differences between the rigor the coursework and classwork and assignments from the BSW and MSW. So if you have any comments, definitely let me know. We're going to go to the comments to see if anyone's chimed in. Okay, what's up, Rosie? I missed you last week. I miss you. Yes, I agree. I took yoga for my elective during my... See, that is... That's what I'm talking about. Yep. Um, yes, I agree. I took yoga for my elective during my BSW. In the MSW, I'm currently taking psych trauma assessments, which I... Tr oh, that sounds good. Oh, my goodness. But you see that. That's a perfect example. I appreciate you sharing. So, yoga, she said she took for her elective, for her BSW. And then for her MSW, she's taking psych trauma assessment. Y'all see the difference between that? You see the clear... You see, clearly see the difference. Okay. It sounds like it's exciting, too. I am so glad to see you too, Rosie. I am so glad to see you. But we're moving on with our second um, difference because tonight, like I said, if you're just kind of joining in, my name is Melanie and you are watching Core Inspirations. This is another episode of Social Work Live where we talk about all things social work. And tonight's topic, we're talking about, hey, what's the difference between a BSW and an MSW program? We're going to be talking about six differences between BSW and MSW programs, and I'm talking about my grad school experience personally. So definitely, like I said, if you're new to the channel, look around. Don't forget to subscribe so that you can be officially welcomed into the Social Work Tribe. Don't forget to turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified every time that I upload. Social Work sessions are always going to be on Tuesdays at this time at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. In the event that I change it, I would definitely update the community. But as of right now, it stands Tuesdays each week, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you are definitely welcome. If you want to put your name below, let me know if you're an MSW student, BSW student, or you're entering into your career. Definitely let me know. If you're seasoned, let me know. I would love to know. Nevertheless, we're going to move on with the second, the second difference between the BSW and MSW program. So like I said, I have my notes here because I was just like really thinking like what were some of the major differences that I was able to see within my actual program? So let's see here. So we talked about two of the differences. We talked about the BSW and we talked about the MSW. So the two differences between the two of those things. Now we're going to look into more of graduate level writing. So I know writing is not a it's, it's in everything that we do. It's not just one particular course. It's embedded in everything we do. Oh my goodness. When I tell you, when I tell you, this was something that I actually, I've always considered myself as a strong writer, but I still nevertheless needed skill sets to build upon that because I was out of school for a while before I entered my BSW program. So I would tell you, go, coming into the BSW program, my writing skills were really, like, I really could not get with the APA. Like, I was like, oh, my goodness, what is this APA? I was coming from, and I maybe dated myself, but the MLA format, you know? But just to keep in mind that, you know, knowing and understanding 
how to write is so essential in the program. Like, I don't care if you're a BSW student or MSW student, knowing how to write is essential, you know? Knowing how to write, it determines your grade. It's a really big portion of your grade. You do a lot of writing. You do a lot of reading. And knowing how to critically read is something that I had to learn. You know, it's something I definitely have to learn. So I guess we're going to say this is two and three right now. Critically learning how to look at context, reading certain things as it relates to, you know, reading a big paragraph and learning how to take out the main points out of that and to, you know, answer questions precisely. That is a skill set. So I had to learn how to use that as it related to my BSW program because I worked full time at the time when I was doing my undergrad. And I didn't have time sometimes, all the time, to read all the chapters, read all. And, and they know that. They know that some of the coursework is some of the things you're going to have to develop a skill, especially when you get to grad school. You have to develop a skill to how to digest large text. So when I first started off, when I first started off with that, we're going to talk about large text first, and then we're going to get into the, um, the writing so when I first started off with that, I was like very detailed, reading line by line, reading paragraph by paragraph, sentence by sentence. And I would get a lot of information. But the thing is, this is not so much of how much you consume. It's about what you retain. It's all about comprehension, right? So I had to learn, and I have a video on that, talk about how to learn and looking at the disc. Um, there's an actual assessment that you can take to really learn how to, you know, like know what works for you, how you perceive information. Are you more auditory? Are you more um, a combination of visual and auditory and, you know, so on and so on. You have to really know that. And I feel like it's essential that you do. You know, you'll be pretty much at a disadvantage if you're really not understanding how you learn and how you receive information, because I feel like that was a deal breaker for me. I really learned that in undergraduate. So I realized that I had to learn how to highlight text. I had to do things better for me, putting things in more of a list format. So as I would read through the chapters, look through the headings, look through what the assignment called for, and look through the headings of the different chapters and read in that particular order. So that, for one, I'm answering the questions the way it's asked, but I'm also not reading stuff that I don't necessarily need. All of it's applicable, right? But is it all necessary to what the assignment may be calling for? So knowing how to read critically is definitely a plus. And I first learned that skill by learning how to learn in grad school. Um, the difference between that is because when I first started off, I wasn't really comfortable with really reading big texts. The difference between that and my MSW program is that I had learned that skill set. I learned how my learning style, it was conducive to me. I learned that, hey, I'm the type of person you're going to see orange, you're going to see yellow, you're going to see pink, you're going to see blue. And I always have a pen. I have to write things down. Um, but that's the way I learn. And I thought initially that I was more of a visual learner and found out that I was more of an auditory learner. I led with being an auditory learner first and visual. I was kind of like 50-50. You know, so that's why I tell you it behooves you to really learn your learning style and then practice. Like if you're entering your BSW program, practice uh, what you know. If it's something that your particular professor has provided a lecture on, write down some of the things that you learn from that. Like write down the things that you learn. And those things that they may not be on the paper that you didn't learn, those are sometimes indications of what you need to go back and study. So everybody has their own particular method of how they study, but learning how to write. Oh my goodness, let's go to the chat on this one. <laughs> um, you said, um, yes, Rosie, thank you. Definitely thumbs up this video because it lets YouTube and the algorithm within YouTube and lets this video reach people that it definitely needs to. And I do depend on the community here to reach and share the videos because a lot of times, like I said, we may just not know that other people um, are here to support, but it's up to you all to let other people know like, hey, you know, there's definitely more support around being a social work student and a professional. But you say, as much as I love writing, my pen skills are 100%. I write poetry. However, in the MSW program, you have to be concise, consistent, and thorough. I naturally write a lot. So being concise, um, you said, was hard. It is important to take notes rewriting from the powerpoints oh my goodness yes yes and yes rosie yes 
I'm going to slow that down a little bit as she talks about the writing. So that leads us into number three, since you're talking about writing, because I talked about number one, talking about the rigor between the BSW and MSW program, that the coursework, that the assignments are definitely more rigorous as you elevate within the program. Number two, we talked about the, por the importance of reading large text. I had to learn my learning style when I was in my BSW program before implementing that in my MSW program to learn how to read critically, reading critically in big text. And then the third one we're going to talk about is APA. What is the fourth edition? APA. I had to learn how to write. And you are definitely on it, Rosie. You said it is very important to take notes. So some people, um, if you, and then this is key too when it comes to taking notes. If you are more like a detail-oriented person like myself, I would like try to write everything the professor saying. Everything. I had to learn that in my BSW program. I would write it down, write it down, write it. And I'm so focused on trying to write every note down that I'm not, like I said, it's about comprehension. I'm not comprehending what they are saying, you know? So I had to realize that sometimes if you prepare ahead of time, if you have the PowerPoints already, slides, that you can just put little notes here and there. You can put little see this or see that, but you don't have to capture every word for ver verbatim, you know? We are definitely not, you know, here to just document every single word. But if you're new to note-taking, that may be something that you're like, you know what? Sometimes you have to learn how to become a note-taker, a skilled note-taker. Note-taking is exactly what it is. It's taking note of something. It's not writing a whole book, a whole actual... You're not transcribing. That's pretty much what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely learning how to take notes. That was something that I learned in BSW and I definitely implemented it within my MSW program. But I would say as it relates to writing, I had to learn my biggest struggle. And I don't know if this relates to anybody else, but my biggest struggle, struggle with my BSW program was citations, in-text citations to be exact. Oh my goodness, I would get the in-text citations so confused with the word cited page. And I was like, oh my goodness, I'm putting the references in. And I would literally jack up some of my papers. Like, <laughs> I'm telling you. But again, you have to start somewhere you have to learn, right? So I had to realize that, oh no, my word cited is me listing the cited and the sources of what you use as reference in your paper. But it was an abbreviated way to do it as it related to inside your paper. Your work cited listed is more long. The URLs are more long. Some of the articles, some of the videos that you've captured, depending on what you're referencing, it's always going to be a shorter and abbreviated way in a particular format inside the paper. So as you're writing a paragraph and you get to the end and you reference something someone said, then you will put it in parentheses, put it there in a shortened um, particular format, you know, per APA format. And I didn't get that concept as much because I wasn't used to writing at a graduate level. So I had to spend time at the writing center. I had to spend time um, getting feedback from my professors. I had to spend time submitting my work, um, you know, so I had to spend more time with my writing, even though I have always been strong in writing. And like you said, Rosie, too, you write, you write poetry. You still have to learn how to be concise. She said she had to learn how to be consistent and you have to learn how to be thorough. And another point, I would even say as a, just as a side note, like as an additional note, as it came to writing, I had to get away from jargon. If you go through APA and you work through and you go through that book, you know that it talks about it. I really, and, and I think we probably could do a whole video on APA. I might do that because I'm telling you, it was something I, I didn't even understand the book. I was just like, okay, what am I need to do? I just was like, I don't get it. You know, so I literally had to take it slow, digest it, and get it. Because I knew that I was confident in writing. I just had to understand that this is a particular writing style. And it is prone more to an academic prone. Let me put that in here because that's exactly what I put here. I made sure that I wrote that down. So the APA is a format and it's a style of writing. Because our degree is social science and behavior science degree. The APA purpose is to really take away and limit the amount of bias. So it's more academic prone, more academic prone and scholarly prone, more factual based upon research and facts. 
not based upon opinions. Because again, it's a social science, it's a social and behavior science degree. So things can kind of go skewed because people can sometimes lend their opinions about things, but their opinions may necessarily not be backed behind research. And you know, we just don't say our opinions about different things. So that is the purpose. If you ever wonder why, like, why do we have to be able to write that way? It's a more academic form and style of writing. And because that, because of the science, the social science degree that it is, it really sometimes is prone to people's personal bias, which we all have them. But it's, that's why it recommends the references the way it does. That's why it talks about, you know, the hanging and then and all of that listening to alphabetical order. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about with the APA, but it's definitely its goal is to diminish, limit and decrease the biases that sometimes writers may write by making and forcing us to be able to be more academically prone to referencing things from professionals, referencing other research that have already have literature surrounding those topic matters. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's visit the chats again as it relates to the third topic as we're talking about graduate level writing. Let's see here. She said it's also important to take notes. You talked about that. Um, rewriting from the PowerPoint. That's a good thing too because sometimes the PowerPoint depends on how they are. You may have to um, you know, adjust per your understanding and per your learning style. Taking breaks and skimming reading like a pro. The amount of reading in the advanced standard MSW program is on another level. Thank you so much, Rosie, for sharing your experience because somebody needs to know that. You know, somebody needs to know that because you do. You have to learn how to critically read. That was our second, you know, topic for today. So I just wanted to express that because I, t I personally, like I said, I struggled in that. And in my BSW program, um, I wasn't always able to connect the dots of what I was doing wrong in my writing. And like I said, I I just really was just determined to really just get like a perfect paper. Like I wanted to, not perfect in the sense of like, oh, I just want to get it right just to say that I got an A. But no, I wanted to see my growth. I wanted to measure my growth and my development as it pertains to my writing. So in my MSW program, I had a lot of those um, skill sets down. And I personally feel like within the MSW program, it's an expectation. It's an expectation that you know how to write. I definitely know that um, professors will lend time for further development or refer you to a writing center if they feel like um, that the needs are definitely there. Because some people may have been out of school, you know, for a long time before they enter into their um, MSW program. But definitely graduate level writing, when I tell you, it's an expectation. From my experience, this is an expectation. And it was something that I, one particular professor I have in mind, and I appreciate and value that she would actually go through and explain to you why you were wrong. And that was life changing for me. Like, one thing it is in telling me I'm wrong, but it's another thing in telling me I'm wrong and showing me the correct format. So don't be afraid of it. I know it can be like a frustrating process. I know I would hear a lot of my cohorts and myself included. We could sometimes get frustrated when we get our papers back. But just realize that it's really preparing you to set you apart whenever you graduate, that your graduate level writing, because as you know, we do a lot of writing in the work that we do. So it's important that you get that understanding now before you get into the field. Now, granted, everything that you write when you get into the um, profession is not always going to be academic based, like everything, like it's not going to always be an actual, you know, exam paper. But you need to know those skill sets in the event that you're presenting something um, to your team and to your superiors or to your peers or to an organization. Um, you may be um, preparing some type of, um, I'm not going to say pitch, but like a proposal, you know, so it's very important. So certain things um, deem certain particular writing styles. So APA, I promise you, is not going anywhere. So you got to get used to it. You have to definitely get used to it. And what did you say, Rose? You said, I actually like APA format, but there's a new edition every year. I know. So I don't know. In 2019, it was the fourth edition. So I don't know if they made it to the fifth and the sixth, but it is no joke. But I do say taking the time to, um, and this is another thing too, I would say on that. And I really wasn't even trying to stay on the writing part for so long. But I'm telling you, it was an area that I needed help with. I want to say it was like a website. Sometimes the websites are not always accurate. I found myself that I, I would try to use like for like a little quick when I didn't feel like looking in a book and referencing a book and seeing the examples, but I didn't have time. And y'all know sometimes 
trying to get that paper in. You ain't got time. I will try to be quick and try to be fast and go do a workaround, a little quicker workaround. And I will possibly sometimes go to like a website. Sometimes the websites are not accurate as it relates to APA. You know, so I will actually actually go to the actual um, book itself. I would definitely go to the actual book itself just to make sure that I'm actually um, doing what I need to do. So those were one of the things that I found myself like, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to, um, I'm going to have to learn. Let me see here. I wanted to make sure that I also explained it too. Because I wrote it down here, but I wanted to make sure that I explained exactly what it was. But yes, even if you feel that you are a person that's strong in writing, like I said, you always can, um, you know, improve in that, okay? And then for the people that I've, because I know I've kept, you know, using that word interchangeably, APA, but it stands for the American Psychological Association. So that's, I know my book was like a blow, I don't have it with me, but I definitely purchased it. It's something that I would definitely encourage you to um, have on hand. Um, some of you, like, I know, I think, um, you know, some people rent it, but I definitely would encourage you to buy it if you can afford it, because especially if you're a uh, BSW student, you definitely, it's a good investment and I don't have any, you know, bearings. I'm not doing any suggested selling or anything like that. I'm not affiliated with any, um, APA literature books or anything. Um, but I just know that it was beneficial for me to use in my BSW, but definitely beneficial to use in my MSW program. So we are going to move on to the fourth difference. So tonight we're talking about what? We're talking about the differences between the BSW and the MSW program. We're talking about six different differences between the BSW and the MSW programs. And I'm sharing my personal experience of my grad school experience. Um, I feel like this is definitely a question that I would get often. It's something that I wish that I would have known um, as it relates to just kind of knowing a little bit more about the main differences or what to expect when entering a BSW or MSW program. Tonight, we talked about three pointers already. The first one is being the first difference is the rigor as it relates to coursework and assignments from a BSW and an MSW program. The second we talked about was the actual, let me see, I want to make sure I'm getting it right. I done put so many notes everywhere. Hold on. Give me one moment here. Because this one, I had to do a lot of reflecting. I had to do a lot of reflecting to make sure that, like, okay, what was my experience all the way on this particular thing, you know? What was my experiences? So I want to make sure I'm writing it on here. So we talked about all the details. And I can kind of, like, highlight. Let's do that. I can kind of highlight what we talked about um, as it related to the rigor. I was expressing that um, I felt like it was more electives and it was more general courses when it came to your BSW and then for your MSW there were way more concentrated courses um, in areas such as like child welfare, mental health for people that are trying to go the clinical path um, as it related to micro and macro social work. They offered and lended a lot of additional insight in my MSW program as it related to theories, concepts, practices, and procedures. Um, I did feel like I did learn some basic level interventions. I mentioned the GI model, which is a general, generalist intervention model as it relates to the process of problem solving. And I just felt like my MSW program built upon my education that I learned in my BSW program, but definitely at an advanced level. So I would definitely say definitely, definitely, definitely at an advanced level. All right. And we talked about number two, we talked about the importance of critical reading, knowing how to digest large text, knowing, knowing how to understand your learning style to have that skill developed to learn how to read critically. It was something I discovered in my BSW program, something I implemented way more in my MSW program. And number three, we talked about writing, APA, all day long. We talked about the degree of BSW and MSW is a social and behavioral science degree. And we talked about the APA is more of a format and a style of writing because it's more based upon academic prone, meaning that they want you to be coming from a more scholarly area of research, not stating that this is your thought about this or this is somebody else's opinion about that. They wanted to diminish and decrease the bias of writing 
as it relates to academics. So there's always going to be a more scholarly um, expectation and more academic prone writing. So that's the purpose behind APA writing. If you was ever interested in like, why do we have to stick with this particular writing? And it's one thing too, I will say this, once you kind of get used to it, you get used to it, you know, because that particular APA really, they may have make amendments with certain things, but for the most part, once you find out what your particular professor wants, you'll be able to know exactly how to do it. Now, I will say that too. Some particular professors were more strict and lenient on certain things, and some particular professors had their preference of what they wanted you to use within the APA and what they felt like you didn't have to use or implement. So that's definitely something to be mindful of too. But we're going on with number four. And number four, we're going to be talking about field placement and field practicum. So definitely we know that there's a difference between the hours for your actual internship and your actual hours of field practicum. The hours may vary from state to state, so I'm not going to get into particulars with that because, like I said, it varies from state to state. But from what my program was, you had less hours that you were um, required to do in your field practicum placement um, than my MSW field practice well, in my internship practice my internship I had less hours to do in my BSW internship than I had in my MSW field practicum um, as it relates to like the skill sets and things that I learned I think I mean as I reflect back I was just so excited to enter into the work of social work you know and I'm still excited hence you see what I'm doing I love the work that we do and I love to help people along the way but I just was very green. I didn't know a whole lot about it. I knew some of the work that social workers did. I knew some of the roles, but I didn't know like the, int you know, the details of what that um, role consisted of. And then the very, the very, um, very variety of settings that, you know, social workers can actually practice in. So I was just very open minded to learning so many different things. I was very excited to kind of know like, okay, well, we're going to learn in this course, you know, but at the same time, like I said, I was working full time. So I was just like, you know, sometimes I was exhausted and I really didn't have, you know, my hundred percent self all the way, like in tune to it. Sometimes I just had to get an assignment, get it done and get it over with, you know, but I do remember just being very excited about having opportunities to be able to. Um, okay, like say, oh, this is what a social worker note will look like, you know, and I was able to, I really enjoyed connecting the dots from what I was taught in cl my classroom experience versus what people were actually doing in my internship. So I was interested to see like how that, you know, how that um, knowledge base kind of like transcend together and how it was actually implemented because a lot of times you're learning the basics and you can kind of take that basic knowledge and think, you can apply that. That's the same way it's going to be when you get in a real life setting. And sometimes it's not, but you get the basis so you have a general understanding. And again, grad school is all about building upon a foundation that's been laid. The, the BSW is a foundation. The MSW is a foundation. School itself is a foundation. So I definitely will put that in there. It's your responsibility to, to build upon that. You know, it's your responsibility to build upon that. And everybody's um, process is different. Everybody's process is different. And let me see here. I want to make sure that I'm not overlooking the chat over here. But yeah, everybody's process is different, you know. So definitely realize that your journey is your journey. Um, let me make sure I have it up here. Right, give me one moment. I want to make sure I'm not ignoring the chats over here. But yeah, just understand that, you know, everybody's process is different. And... The way you receive information, the way you process information, you know, it's, it's up to you. It's up to you to figure out these different things as it relates to your overall development, you know. But like I said, again, it's building upon that. And a lot of times, the more information you learn about yourself, the more you learn about the profession, it can kind of like help you and be a, a guide to know like, you know what, I think I want to try this area of practice. I think I need to grow these skill sets to help me, you know. So school, when they teach you these, you know, fundamentals about the, the practices of social work, the procedures of social work, it's at a level of academia. But it has to be coupled with experience, right? Because that's the whole purpose of us having field practicums and internships is to give us real life experiences to implement a lot of the skill sets that we learn in the classroom. Because those skill sets come from books, but those books have to be implemented and applied in real life everyday work, right? So that's what makes us, you know, be the 
practitioners that we are by practicing, keyword practicing, right? So our degree and our um, profession lends us those experiences. And like I said, they require certain particular hours for a BSW program versus an MSW program. And from each state, it may um, require different requirements, but please know that you're probably going to be required to do more um, field placement hours, you know, field practicum hours at your MSW program, which means that probably within the first semester, you're doing some general work for you probably within that second semester, probably jump right into it. If you're doing event standing, you'll probably jump right into your field, pl your field practicum. Okay, now if anybody has any questions, I see other people are coming in. If you have any questions, definitely don't feel, you know, don't feel shy to comment down below. If there's any questions that you have in particular to um, the BSW, the MSW program that I may not go over because tonight is talking about six differences between BSW and MSW program based upon my grad school experience. And again, I put out a disclaimer earlier that I'm not speaking on behalf of every social work program, right? I'm here talking about my particular program because they do differ, and I'm not um, giving my opinion as it relates to inclusively only talking about my program rules because it doesn't. Everybody has different barriers and different programs with different processes. We're very similar uh, because of the Council on Social Work Education, CSWE, aligns certain guidelines, but sometimes the programs are kind of like rolled out in a different manner. So I will not be talking about everyone's program. This is my um, personal experiences obtaining my BSW and MSW degree. All right, so we're going to go right into number five. And this is something that most people know already, but I still wanted to talk about it. So it's the duration, right? So the duration of your BSW is going to be different from the duration and length of your MSW program. So as I mentioned earlier, when I first talked about what the BSW is, it's a Bachelor of Social Work, and it's normally typically a four-year undergraduate degree. And that is pretty much, let me put this here, it's a four-year undergraduate degree, and it can be a little bit longer for some people, depending on where they're at in their program or what courses they had to take or possibly retake. It's typically, though, in standard and traditional ways, a four-year undergraduate degree. And they have a particular, you know, program and protocol of how they want you to do it. And that's the duration that it normally takes. And normally, for like the first two years, you'll probably take in a lot of the electives. Like I mentioned um, before, it's more general general education electives, your English, your math, your sciences, biology. I know I did take, I had to take biology class too, history. And the last half, the latter two years are pretty much focused on your social work core courses, um, yeah, maybe your groups or anything like that, your group work. I know I took a groups in BSW and I took a groups in my MSW program and they were completely different. Both of them were very informative, but again, the MSW is going to be at a higher level. So with the BSW, when it comes to the group course, we, were at, we had to design the, we design our objectives and design what we we're going to do and what particular activity we were going to do and what type of group we were going to do and talk about how we were going to advertise it and select if it was going to be a closed or open group so it was giving us the basics of what the happenings and the practices of setting up a group consisted of but then in my msw program we actually was very more practical we actually had to do that what we did in my bsw program create the group determine if it's going to be open or closed who's going to be advertised for but then we had to implement it and we did that by running a group so we did that um, sometimes within our field practicum, but we also did it in the classroom in our roles. And we had to walk out our steps and we had to turn in our outlines and all of that. Our group proposals, we had to do all of that. So again, it's an, an advanced um, level. So we talked about that as well. But your MSW, as it relates to our fifth topic tonight, is the duration. Your MSW program is going to be a um, and it's going to require you to do more actual um, hours. And there's a reason behind that. It's going to be going into my sixth topic for the day, which is pretty much talking about how the field practicum, which is the MSW, and how the field placement, which is the BSW, is actually preparing you for the workforce. And that is number six. BSW degrees are really geared for entry-level positions. So they're really kind of giving you a lot of insight on how to just basic, you know, social work practices and procedures, 
a lot of times from my experience, I saw that a lot of people um, sometimes went to the Department of Social Services um, where they would accept a lot of bachelors of social work um, graduates and they would go to child welfare. So child welfare was a really big sector that I saw that a lot of people went where it was really much more case management prone. So you were working with children, you were working with families. Some people were doing like in-home where they were kind of like doing different processes and procedures to keep the children from being out of place, out of outside of the home. So they was given some skill sets around parenting skills and, you know, doing a lot of workshops and what we call psychoeducation, teaching, um, giving some skill sets to teach the family skill sets so they can maintain their family unit. And then some people were within the foster care sector where um, sometimes they would get the investigation and then they could do in-home. And then if that didn't work, then sometimes people um, found themselves within the foster care process where um, sometimes parental rights were revoked and the children were, you know, in pla you know, place in foster care for a certain amount of time until the parents were able to sometimes get the children back or unfortunately not, you know. And that particular role is more known to what society views as social workers, you know, because a lot of times they view us taking children within that child welfare sector. But, you know, and if you don't know, just stick around here long enough that we are more than just that. That work and child, feel, child welfare work is definitely essential. It's definitely needed. Um, but it's not sometimes always for everyone. And you'll definitely have to know more about yourself. And I'd always recommend, you know, trying things out, seeing if things are for you and growing from that. I've uh, always been a person. I like to gather information from different resources and different people. But I like to be able to try things out for myself because sometimes people are biased to what they like. People are biased to what they don't like, you know, but you may experience something in a completely different way from someone else. And if you only go based upon negative feedback or only go based upon what other people tell you, you may miss out on a real opportunity of liking a particular area of practice that you probably would not have liked or known that you liked if you don't try it on your own. So like I said, the duration of the time for BSW students and as you graduate and as you go on, those um, BSW students and the program really set you up and prepares you more for entry level. Now, for the Master of Social Work, I feel like it really prepares you for more direct practice work, um, and it's a more advanced level. So a lot of times for the positions for the BSW, I, like I said, I feel like it's more case management. And case management, you know, please, you know, understand, it's going to be, you're going to have some form of case management in most social work roles. Because that's the work that we do. We look at the duration of a particular client or family and we track and we document. We track, we document, implement resources, um, revisit the case several times, look at different things. And we may have it over a long period of time or a specified duration. And we get to you know see the different changes throughout the time that the case is with us. So case management is something that we do. You know, that's one of the skill sets and one of the roles that we do as social workers, as practitioners within this work and field that we do. But MSW, I feel like it helps you to be more advanced because as it relates to the clinical, as it relates to the clinical path and things that you may want to do clinically, the MSW is sometimes more of the degree that helps you connect the dots to clinically. Because like I know in my state, you can't apply for a licensure uh, with being a BSW. You have to further go to a graduate level. So that graduate level degree prepares you for being able to be licensed, provisionally licensed, fully licensed to work clinically. So if your goal is to actually work towards being a therapist or doing something like having your own private practice when that time comes or working within the clinical sector, doing direct practice um, in some type of capacity where you're billing and um, you're billing for a particular clinical service, definitely MSW is going to be a criteria that may be required in your state for you to be actually licensed. So it's that one step next to being fully licensed. And it sometimes requires, um, well, for the most part, if you're doing something clinical, it requires um, a licensure and an exam. So you have to still, sometimes people don't know, after you do apply for a licensure, you have to have additional hours um, to obtain clinical experience then. So then it goes from advanced studies and having your hours that you already did within your field practicum. Now it's pretty much like a paid internship if you kind of want to look at it that way because you have to have a certain amount of clinical hours when it comes to the clinical part. And that video 
in regards to like, you know, clinical and all of that. If that's something that you want to, you know, me to further talk about, I definitely can. So let me go to the chat because I have been talking a while. Let me see here. Um, yes. So we have someone else in here too. We have Janae Will. Um, she says, loving the video. I'm actually heading home to watch American Skin and do a reflection paper on this movie from my culturally humanly, um, culturally humanly course. Okay, okay. Well, I'm glad that you are definitely enjoying the video tonight. Yeah, so you are about to prepare to do it. Can you tell us a little bit more about the assignment, Janae? That'd be awesome. Loving the video. I'm actually heading home to watch American Skin and do a reflection paper on this movie. Okay. So it kind of puts me into like a cultural competence type course. It kind of puts me in the mind of that. So that okay, okay. And is it going on tonight? The American Skin, is it um, going on at a particular time? This may be something helpful for the community. I'm going to write it down. But I work student experience. Um, like I said, my name is Melanie. I haven't even probably officially all the way to <laughs> went into I was just trying to jump in tonight's topic. But um, I really, you know, pride myself in really helping you connect the dots from the classroom to your career. So we talked about social work practices. We talk about programs, all things social work as it relates to your process. Because I was a student. I know how that was for me. And I'm on the other side of being a professional. And I'm still growing the leaps and bounds in my career as well. But this is a platform definitely designed for social work students and uh, professionals. It was intentionally designed with social work students and professionals in mind. Like, I just don't say it to say it. But I truly, truly uh, wanted to build a platform that was going to be beneficial to the development, even as it relates to the student process. A lot of times, like I said, um, in my earlier times of inquiring about being a social worker, I would see people talk about the career part. Um, and really kind of highlight that. But I wanted to kind of get some more information about the um, the actual student process because it, it, it can be a lot. It can be very stressful. It can be very rigorous and tedious at times. And I wanted to offer some support to social work students as well as they journey through to become a student, to be a professional. So tonight we talked about BSW versus MSW. Six differences between a BSW and an MSW program. And I share my own personal grad school experiences. Number one, we talked about the rigor, the coursework and assignments as it relates to the BSW and MSW. And I compared them for you to kind of let you know exactly what that detailed. We talked about number two, we talked about knowing how to read critically, knowing how to look at large texts and paragraphs and certain literature and data. And looking at that and learning how to digest those things to get out what you need to complete an assignment, to answer a question, um, to uh, post on a post discussion. You have to learn how to read critically. I learned that in my BSW by learning and um, like really finding out what my learning style was and my studying style. And I implemented that within my MSW program. And then we talked about writing. We talked about that lovely word, APA. And I express to you the purpose of what that particular APA is for while we use it within the profession, the social work profession. And I talked about growing that skill set. I talked about growing that skill set. I shared my experiences and my challenges that I had initially in my BSW program. And I shared how I built upon them experiences and my struggles in my MSW program, how I was naturally and always have been very strong in writing abilities as it came to my writing abilities. But I had to still build upon that because I had to learn and get used to formatting and writing in the style that was more academic versus ways that I was previously used to writing. And then we talked about number four. We talked about um, the differences of the duration of time for your internships, for your MSW program, and then for your field practicum, for your, for your internships, for your BSW program, and then for your field practicum, for your MSW programs, there's going to be a duration. There's going to be sometimes that you're going to be required to get a certain amount of um, internship hours as it relates to your BSW program. I talked about it being a four-year duration standardly. For the most part, it's like four years. Sometimes it could be a little bit more. I talked about the MSW program too, that it, um, it could be anywhere from one to two years. Um, it could be one year for people that are eligible for advanced standing. 
and I have a video all about advanced standing. If you don't um, know exactly what advanced standing it is, definitely look under it for my BSW program, for my um, field play, for my field internship, and then for my MSW, I want to say I have to do 900. I want to say I have to do 900. So that just kind of gives you a little example. I am in the state of North Carolina again. I wasn't going to get into into particulars because each states have their own bearings. So you have to look up per your state and then per your program. Okay. And then we talked about number six. Um, how I felt like the BSW program prepares you for the career and the profession. And how the MSW program helps you prepare for the career profession. I talked about how the BSW are pretty much prone for entry-level positions. And then how MSW is a little bit more advanced. Um, especially if you're interested in doing things as it relates to like clinical. If you're wanting to do therapy in any form of fashion. I feel like that's definitely something that that particular degree sets you up for. And if you are a BSW student and you have um, aspirations to pursue therapy and clinical and mental health, I definitely um, would tell you to do your research because you're actually going to need a higher level of graduate degree. And there's different flexibilities with that. Um, so it's just, you know, it's all of what you want. Some people don't want to obtain an MSW degree, and that's okay. And some people want to attain the MSW degree but may not want to go clinical, and that's okay. It's what your particular needs are, what your desires are, what your goals are. This information is just a general just because I've been through both processes, both an undergraduate program and a graduate program. So I hope that these tips tonight were definitely insightful. Um, I was very, I wanted to be very practical and very honest and very upfront, uh, which I am, you know, not to say I'm, you know, I'm not, but I just wanted to make sure that I give some type of content that is really, you know, it can be really effective and implemented and really giving you a greater insight of what you really can kind of like expect, you know, but if there's anything else that I may have left out, definitely comment below. If you are in a currently in your BSW program, definitely comment below. Tell us like what was some of the um, takeaways that you learned from today's session. If you are MSW pro, um, if you are in an MSW program, definitely comment below. Like let me know what some of the things that you have been experiencing in your program. And if you are a graduate and like Rosie about to graduate in two months, <laughs> Rosie, I don't know if you still watch it, but yes, ma'am. If you are about to graduate from your program, definitely let us know. You know what your experience has been because a lot of times, like I said. Sometimes we don't know what we don't know. And this channel is about building community here and really changing the narrative about social workers and the work that we do. We are so essential in the work that we do. I know that that's been a big word with COVID and all of that. But yes, I see you down there too, talking about some A. <laughs> but yes, you know, it's just important. You know, we build community around here. And again, for anyone that is new to the channel, this is a social work channel. We talk about all things social work. Um, my name is Melanie, and like I said, as you can see below, I've had obtained my BSW, my MSW, and my LCSWA. So I'm definitely versed in social work practices and procedures. I love the work that we do. I'm continuing to grow within my profession, and I love giving back. I like to be able to help people reach their goals as well. And if it's any um, particular subject matter, as I mentioned before, but it's worthwhile repeating, if it's anything that you feel like you're really wanting to get some further insight on, um, if I made a video on it, I'll definitely refer you to the video. But if I haven't, I can bring those things right into the session. So you can reach out to me with any questions or any particular requests and um, content requests. You can definitely DM me on Instagram. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to share, share, share. Um, don't forget to put your notification bells on. And then you already know, like if you're still here, if you resonated with anything, go ahead and subscribe. So you could be officially, officially welcome into our social work tribe. But without any further ado, we are going to call it a night. We are going to call it a night. Thanks, everybody, so much for tuning in. Rosie, you have a good, good night. I didn't even ask you how your day was. How was your day? I want to know how your day was before we end. Did you have a good day? If you're still watching, because I'm not sure I know that. Um, Hold up, girl. Are you on spring break? Did your spring break start yet? I don't know if she's still on here. Because I remember you was, we was talking about that before. You was talking about your spring break. And I think it's this week. I think you may be on spring break. I'm not sure. 
but I'll lend some time for her to answer that question if she's still watching. But if there's any questions right now, I can take a couple of questions if you have any questions. If not, it's okay. No worries. Yes, it did. Okay. So you are on spring break. I think you're saying you're on spring break. Yeah. Yeah. But there's always so, so much more. When I tell y'all, I mean, it's so many different things. And, and I think, I, I know I personally enjoy hearing um, people's stories about their programming with some of the things that they may have experienced because some programs are doing like full-time, you know, they have different courses, you know, they have different courses. I know even with Rosie being on here, she shared some of the courses that she's been through and that some of those courses wasn't offered within my program. So I enjoy hearing some of the programs and courses that you all are getting to take. I know Janae, she had mentioned, because I think she had to go, but she's talking about American Skin. She's doing a reflection paper on it. Um, she said this movie is for her cultural humility, or yeah, a cultural humility course. So I love that. It kind of reminds me of a cultural competence course that we had to take. I had to take several of those. That was like the area of practice of my program. But you said, yes, it did. She said, girl, I've been sleeping and working at my part-time. Okay, yes, due to COVID-19. I took the entire program online and I know my experiences have been so much. I know my experiences have been so much if I were on campus fall semester. Um, the school we no longer be remote. Just glad I'm graduating. Yes, yes. And I know. And see, that's what I talked about too. My heart went out to everyone. Like around this time, March, you know, everybody was kind of like, really like in the pandemic, you know, a lot of restrictions and a lot of stay at home orders was being enforced and implemented. And a lot of people that actually signed up for like brick and mortar programs to like literally be in the classroom was forced to like be online, you know? And I mean, it was just a lot. It was just a lot to take in. And I couldn't imagine having to do that. And then some of the field practicum programs and internships have to be amended and advised. So it's just a lot. And I know that everybody had all hands on deck from the professors to the field instructors to the deans to all of the people that are responsible for rolling out the programs and developing it. I know people have to kind of like regroup, you know, and I know it was a lot for faculty, staff, students, like all, you know, so my hat goes out to all of you all that had to really endure that process, you know, but as we know, you know, change is inevitable. Um, we have to adapt as social workers. Those are skill sets that we have to learn. Um, and we'll learn that within the profession that we do, you know, so it's making you a better person. It's making you a better social worker. And oh my goodness, um, um, Rosie, you're going to have to let me know what you are doing. Did you start planning your celebration yet? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want to know. I would be asking you that all the time. Have you started planning your celebration? <laughs> yeah. And I'm glad you were able to get you some rest. I'm so glad you were able to get you some rest. That's a good thing. I love to hear that. And what have you been doing for self-care? Okay, I think we got somebody else in here. Okay, I see Samantha Chandler. What calendar? She said, I'm from Canada. I'm looking to apply to the BSW program next year. Okay, Samantha from Canada. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome to the Core Inspirations. Welcome to the Social Work Tribe. If you haven't um, subscribed, definitely do so if anything resonated with you from tonight's Social Work Session Live. But Samantha said, I'm from Canada. I'm looking to apply to the BSW program next year. Right now, I'm taking some electives. Can you speak on other work options I might have if I have my BSW? Let's see here. Yeah, our graduation will be online. Okay, I see what you said too, Rosie. You said your graduations are going to be online this summer. Okay, but you still got to let me know what you said. I would like to take pictures. Yes, yes, yes. I definitely... Yes. Okay. Hey, Samantha. I'm like excited. I was wanting to, I didn't want to annoy you either, Rosie, but that's good. I'm glad that you're actually planning your actual, um, your celebration. I'm glad to see that you're on your spring break and getting some rest, but yes, welcome. Welcome, Samantha. But you said you are from Canada. You're looking to apply to the BSW program next year. Right now you're taking some electives. Can you speak on, you're looking to apply to the BSW program, but right now you're taking some electives. 
So Samantha, tell me a little bit more background about it because I want to answer your questions, but I want to kind of get a little insight. So right now you're taking classes like um, what are you taking classes on as of right now? Like, are you at a community college right now and then thinking about transferring? Because I don't know how how it is in Canada, but tell me a little bit more about, about that. I don't mind staying on for a little longer to kind of answer your questions. And thank you for being brave enough to come in and comment. But I'll stay on a little longer. But give me a little background, Samantha, about where you're at when you said you're um, applying. You're wanting to apply to the BSW program, but right now you're just taking some electives. Are you in another program major? Did you recently change a major? Are you at a community college? Okay, y'all try to chime in at nighttime. Okay, T, unknown. And Samantha, I'm, um, I'll wait and give you some time to respond. T, I know you said, hello, I'm Tiffany Thompson. Hey. Yes, happy social work month, everybody. Yes, happy national social work. I know I said that last session, but yeah. How you doing, Tiffany? She said, happy social work month, everyone. She said, I am a CPS worker. Okay. Child Protective Services in the building. For those that don't know about CPS, she said, um, I am a CPS worker. Um, oh, okay, not a social worker, but case manager. That's a whole nother video right there, Tiffany. Listen, y'all. She said that she's a CPS worker, not a social worker. So depending on where she stays in her state, some people can still be a CPS if they have like a bachelor's degree or a master's degree or sometimes if they're trained. So it depends on where she's at, where she's located. But she said she's a CPS worker, not a social worker, but case manager. But she loves social services. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. How long have you been a CPS worker, Tiffany? Thank you so much, Rosie, for welcoming people. Like I said, I don't mind staying a little longer. I definitely have some time tonight to do so, so I don't mind doing that. And Samantha, I'm waiting for you, too, to kind of give me a little bit more insight. You asked me, can I speak on other work options I might have as a BSW student? I'll just generally answer that until you're able to come and actually kind of like let me know a little bit more about you. But yes, I feel like for um, the BSW students, more definitely um, things that you can do in case management roles. So, but you can do case management in a variety of settings. So sometimes they have positions within the um, the actual hospital setting. If you're interested in that, you could be a case manager there and you'll be primarily for some of the roles um, looking for resources, helping out some of the clients there and kind of like being like a support to staff. Um, that's there that may be working with um, clients and working with children and families and patients on particular, you know, matters. There's case management roles and sometimes it's not going to be, you know, always in the title or the role that you're doing. But when I say case management, I mean that you're going to be responsible for managing a case for a duration of time as it relates to needed resources, uh, helping to problem solve, meeting the client with some of their goals and action plans and really kind of doing a little bit more work of, generally helping them throughout one particular um, event in their lives, several events in their lives, maybe someone in their family and other people that they may need resources. They may have need for, you know, child care. They may have need for substance abuse. They may have need for mental health services. So you may can be doing referrals. You could be referring out to other agencies that may can help them with certain things. You may be refer, referring them out to other service providers as it relates to um, clinical work. So you're doing a lot of helping the client meet their need. So that's mainly what it is. But those various settings could be the hospital. Um, sometimes it can also be within the Department of Social Services, as Health and Human Services, Child and Youth Family Services. Um, that may be something that you could do in, within the government sector, within child welfare. That's another sector as it relates to like foster care. I know that they even have um, caseworkers and BSW entry-level positions within really any area of practice, like within the police department, sometimes within the sheriff's department, I've seen positions, and I am here in North Carolina. So again, I don't know what particular um, demographic, like how the settings are in Canada, and this is to answer Samantha's question, but just to give you just a general just, really you could do pretty much um, not so much clinical, you can do like case management type things when it comes to maybe working in a particular agency, but for the most part, 
is going to be case management prone, but there's various settings that you can do them in. Like I mentioned, the hospital, um, sometimes you can work within a school setting. Sometimes they prefer um, masters of social work people to have the MSW degree, but depending on the particular school, um, particular zone, um, the title, if it's a Title I school or not, depending on the needs of a school or the district, they may hire you on as a social worker with your BSW. So it just depends. It just depends. I definitely would say, Samantha, definitely be mindful to look in the um, description. So start doing some of that research now, like in your area or your ideal area you want to work in. Start looking at some of what the job descriptions are just to kind of see exactly what they're hiring for. So that way you can kind of like know what's in the market in your particular area. So hopefully that answers your question. So let's go back to, okay. Okay, so T, so okay, so Tiffany, you've been one since 2014. Okay. Have you ever thought about pursuing your BSW degree or your MSW degree? Have you ever thought about like becoming a social worker, Tiffany? That is awesome. That is awesome. The work that you do is definitely needed. The work that you do is definitely needed. I feel like you have to be a certain particular person. Yeah. And Rosie, what did you say? Samantha, you can work at a hospital. Yep. So she just pretty much just, yeah. Samantha, you can work at a hospital, a foster care agency, Department of Children and Families, case management, hospice, etc. But since you're in Canada, that may be called something else. Exactly. Thank you so much for that, Rosie. Exactly. Um, this great Tiffany, I was a case manager at a foster care agency for one year. Yep. So those are some of the things you could do. I don't want you to think that just because you're getting your BSW, you can't do anything. It is. And a lot of times you build those skill sets. You really are able to like learn particular processes and procedures with certain agencies, you know, but it depends on your overall growth or what you want to do. You know, the first thing I would say, definitely determine and understand, okay, is this what I want to do or how, like what level of impact do you want to do? How, how much access do you want to have? What roles, are, you know, what's the longevity of what you're wanting to do with your career? Those are definitely things that you want to consider in researching. But definitely know that for the most part, BSWs are, are going to kind of be entry level, but they don't always have to be entry level. They can be because sometimes people like myself, I was not traditional. So even though I had my BSW degree, I also had some work experience because myself, I worked for the Department of Social Services for nine years. So I, I had that nine years experience with my BSW. So I'm bringing more to the table than just my BSW. I'm also bringing my experience. So I wouldn't necessarily always go for entry-level position. You see what I'm saying? Because I had levels and years in the system. So though I had my BSW, sometimes I went for a higher level. And then in the industry that I was in, a lot of um, supervisors were even able to um, have BSW degrees. And they were, um, you know, working for the county. And they had their BSW degree. Not all of them had their MSW degree. So I don't know if that helps, but hopefully it does. Um, Rosie said, that's great, Tiffany. She was talking about her being a foster care agent, working at a foster care agency for one year. Um, Samantha said, I am at a university where the BSW is not offered. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. She said, Samantha says that she's at a university where the BSW program is not offered. Taking essentially my first two years of university classes before I can apply to a BSW program from essentially another university. Okay. That's excellent. So that here is how we do it in the States. Like that's similar to what I would call, like what we would call here in my state. And I'm in North Carolina uh, for those that didn't hear that. We call that a transfer of arts degree. So that's similar to what I did, Samantha. I spent two years, um, really more than two years at a community college. So I did a lot of my undergraduate stuff. I did a lot of my general education, my English and my maths my different levels of English, different levels of math. I even took some psychology courses there. I took sociology. I took various social, um, you know, IT classes. A lot of those classes that I took at my community college, I was able to transfer over a lot of those a lot of those college credits. And my BSW program was able to take a lot of those things, and I was able to build um, further because I I want to I kind of graduated a little earlier than a typical person that would probably transfer in at the same time as me. But the way my program was, you had to kind of like, you know, go in a format. A format. It was a particular agenda, the, the way they did it. So I don't know if that helps you. But yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. 
She said her courses are online right now and she's taking general courses like psychology, social. Yep, see? And there's nothing wrong with that. I know for me, it was actually very um, economically um, beneficial to me because I was at a community college and I didn't have that whole duration as we get talk about loans and debt and all of that. I was able to save a lot of money by doing my undergrad, um, doing my general ed courses at a community college and then transferring in because I got a, a in-state rate. And then it wasn't at a university level, so my courses and classes, because my school that I went to, my university was private, so they were higher than with my, when I was at my community college. So kudos to you, and don't think that there's anything wrong with that, but I'm glad that you discovered it. Samantha said, yes, that's exactly what I'm doing. Perfect, 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 perfect. And then let's see, I'm going back to the chat. She said um, her courses were some psychology and sociology. And then Tiffany said, um, I had a thought about getting my MSW in order to become an LCSWA. My end goal is doing therapy. Okay, okay. Well, that is awesome. That is awesome. What population do you want to work with? Do you want to work with family, Tiffany, when it comes to therapy? Or do you want to work with children? Like, what are you interested in? And then, Samantha, I would ask you, too, what made you interested in the social work profession? Like, I love to hear people's stories about that. Samantha, what made you choose the profession of social work? Like, from what I can see, I'm thinking you may wasn't thinking about social work when you first started the uni like that university. If you could tell me, like, what was your first major if, that, if social work wasn't your major? And what made you want to become a social worker? And Rosie said, great, that's good, Samantha. I'm positive you'll do great at the other university. Yes, yes, and yes, she definitely will. Um, and then Rosie said, yes, Tiffany, getting an MSW is essential for being a therapist. You'll definitely get there. I would definitely agree. And just to let you know, too, Tiffany, I'm, I'm really probably going to be doing some things probably as it relates to clinical because I'm actually in a therapist role as of right now. I'm actually a child and family therapist right now. So I'm in a non-clinical, I'm in a um, non-clinical, I'm in a non-profit sector, and I also work as a child and family therapist. So I'm going to be doing some things around clinical. Let me put that down um, because I like to bring videos and I like to talk about things that are actually beneficial, especially for the people that are actually engaged on my channel. I like to be able to give you what you need, you know, because sometimes that's all the difference. I know somebody had to do it for me. Okay. And Samantha said, that's exactly what she's doing. Rosie said, before my BSW, I was working towards being a registered nurse. Yes. How many nurse majors do we have over here? That's how I started out too, Rosie, as a nurse at that community college. By the way, Samantha, I was originally um, declared as a nursing major. But it was an internship that I did with my nursing major and found out, oh, no, I can't do this. I knew that I love working with people, but just not in that walk of life. Yep. And I end up changing it back because initially when I was in high school, I chose and declared social work as a major. So let's see. She said, before my BSW, I was working towards being a registered nurse. This is from Rosie, which didn't work out. Glad I went the social science route. All day, Rosie. Um, and then let's see here. Yeah. So Tiffany... Okay. Tiffany said, yes, I want to stick with youth and families. I'm a new supervisor that used to conduct child abuse investigations. Okay. Okay. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. Um, she said, um, yes, I want to stick with youth and families. I'm a new supervisor that used to conduct child abuse investigations. I also have experience in group home settings. Okay. I love that. I love that. So it sounds like this, and this is what I'm talking about. Sometimes we are already that much close to what we, we like. Sometimes we may be in roles that we really, really like, but we want to be able to advance our studies so that we can do more work within that particular population or that area of practice. You see what I'm saying? Like Tiffany, she really has said that she's enjoying being a CPS worker, which is a child protective service worker. And she's also a new supervisor. And she stated that she also has experience in group home settings. And she's interested in obtaining her BSW. Tiffany, can you are you um comfortable with letting us know what your, what is your undergraduate degree in? Do you have an undergrad, uh, undergraduate degree? If so, if you don't mind sharing that, that'll be 
definitely um, insightful for anyone else that may be in that particular space. But it sounds like, Tiffany, you already know your area of practice. You just want to be able to do more work within working with children, right? I love it. Samantha said, I am a licensed practical nurse. I've been working in hospitals for the past... What? Are you serious? Stop playing. You about to make me throw my book. <laughs> Samantha, what? Samantha's from Canada, y'all. She said, um, I'm a licensed practical nurse. So you are LPN, right? You're LPN. She said, um, I've been working in hospice for the past 10 years. I've been through my experiences with dealing with patients and families that led me to consider a career change. You see what I'm talking about? This is this is the why I love the work that I do. I'm telling you. That is awesome. So you're going to bring those experiences, Samantha, that you have. So, and this is why I tell people that your journey is your journey. Like, I'm so wholehearted about that. Because everybody, because you, I know a lot of people that um, started off in psychology and they have psychology base. And I think that's a skill set because they are, I feel, in my opinion, that they're more prone to understanding theories and really understanding more of the psychology of the mind and why they do that. And then they couple that with the social work practice that puts them in a particular area of practice and, and, and brings a certain level of understanding and skill set that they, that they are able to do. Everybody has specialties and skill sets, and I feel like you have to welcome your process. You know, I feel like you have to welcome your process. I have a little saying that I say that um, you didn't choose social work, social work chose you. So, Samantha, you are definitely, definitely an example of that. I love that, but I definitely would tell you to definitely hone in into those skill sets and I, I tell you to have a good time with it. Be open to learning social work. You're really going to see a lot of things that are kind of like that transcends from one profession to the other. So I love, love, love that. I love that. I love that um, you're doing a career change. So welcome for that. Welcome. Let's see here. She said that she's been through her experience with dealing with patients and families that led her to consider a career change. Um and then Tiff said, now I supervise other investigators and guide them on how to work an investigation. Okay, okay. So you supervise others um, as it relates to investigations and guide them to how to work an investigation. That's really, really good. That's really good because I know investigations, that's when initially you're getting a call, right? Um, you, yeah, it's Tiffany Thomas. So you initially someone reports abuse or neglect and then that comes to your department. Is that how it works? It comes to your department and then you assign it out to different um, CPS workers who may follow up on that. And they have to work and to see if it's any um, an actual abuse or neglect that's deemed neglect in your particular state. And then sometimes you have a certain amount of time to maybe close that case down, right? So that's a good thing. I, th I appreciate you sharing that, Tiffany. And then Rosie said, wow, Tiffany, that's so interesting. Thanks for all the work you have done. Yes, 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 yes. She said, Tiffany said, um, yes, my undergrad degree is in sociology. See, you see what I'm talking about, y'all? We got sociology in the building as an undergrad. We have an LPA education background in the building. You see what I'm saying? People, we are multifaceted. We are multiverse in different areas of practice. And I really feel like social workers is really the icing on the cake. Because what it does is that it gives you the reach that you still are able to go within the medical field. Like if Samantha wanted to still use her experiences of working in a hospital, but then when she couples it with the um, with actually getting her social work degree, her BSW and all of that, she can actually do something still within the hospital sector. She may have far more uh, advanced level of understanding some of the hospital practices and procedures because she's been there and done that. And then she can create something, you know, something new. And then even with um, Tiffany, uh-oh, sorry, y'all didn't kick the camera. Um, y'all get me so excited over here. <laughs> but yeah, and then Tiffany, she's already within the government sector, you know, so she already has those things. So sounds similar to what, you know, with me being a non-traditional, you know, having some work experiences, but going back to school, right? Because sometimes we either can get... We want to do other things, you know, because I am big on fulfillment. What are you doing that really is fulfilling you? And impact is something that fulfills me. 
I love working with children. I love working with youth. I love working with families. I love the dynamics of that. And when I was in my role at DSS, I wanted to be more involved in the families. Like I was on the eligibility side, you know, as it relates to food stamps and Medicaid and workforce and all of that stuff. Like knowing some of those procedures and processes of it all that. And it was something that I yearned for because I loved that first, I like that firsthand experience. And it, I had work experience. I was doing my role there too, but I wanted to grow my skill sets. I wanted to grow and develop and really get more access to the populations and area of practice that resonated with me. So I love that y'all are sharing y'all stories. I really, really appreciate that. And Rosie, yes, Samantha and Tiffany, I would love to see you both on the lives more. Yes, I agree, Rosie. They have so much information to share. And Tiffany and Samantha, also, I would like for you to know that Rosie is graduating in two months. So she is currently in a clinical position at her um, internship with her field practicum. But she's about to graduate with her MSW. So anybody that's in here in the comments, definitely shout out Rosie. She got two more months to graduate. Two more months to graduate. And thank you, Rosie. She is definitely a regular around here. There's probably not one live. I don't say your name. <laughs> so I appreciate all the work you do. But Samantha, yes. And Tiffany Thomas, definitely welcome. Welcome, welcome to the Social Work Tribe. Um, no problem. All I have to set my notifications. Yes, yes. Tuesday works for me, Rosie. Okay, yep. Tuesdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you, Tiffany. Yes, congratulations to Rosie. Yes, but I love it. I love it. I love it. We, Like I said, we're all about community here. We're all about building community here. And another passion of mine is really just really trying to debunk the negative narrative that social workers can't make money. I don't believe that's true. It's all about how you are applying yourself, how you are preparing yourself, and being strategic. It's very, very important. But we talk about real life stuff here on this channel. And like I said, this is something that I want to constantly do. If you are new, because Samantha and Tiffany, I don't think I've seen you before in the live. Definitely, like I said, don't forget to share this information with other people that you feel like it'll be useful for. But look around the channel. I have a um, podcast that I do on this channel as well. It's called the Social Work Learning Lounge. And it's pretty much learning on the go, um, different things. We talk about articles and different things, but it's a more academic prone sector of the channel. I'm building that. I'm only um, up to third, the third episode, but we get into more of the academics portion. I'm going to be doing some things there, but I also share my MSW and my BSW journey here. I have a lot of playlists that you can look through. So I have a lot, a lot of insightful information. And for people that are still coming in right now, I um, went over a little bit just to answer some questions, you know, just to answer some questions. And we do this every Tuesday. This is Social Work Sessions Live each Tuesday because I see other people coming in at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. I sometimes, um, for the most part, I do a reminder. So if you are not following me on Instagram, make sure that you're doing that. Um, if you go to my bounce page on my YouTube channel, you'll be able to see that, Okay. You'll definitely be able to see it and it'll take you to a link. But I'm going to put my um, handle here that's on Instagram so that you can see it. So that way you can follow me there. And then you'll be notified too in the event that you ever forget about any lives that we're actually doing. Okay, I think that's good there. So I just put that in the chat there. But yeah, we're definitely here committed to like building each other up. Um, learning and being a resource to people. I built this channel with going through the program and, and, and life still happens, right? Life still happens even as you, or even while you're a social work student. You know, I've been through my BSW having to work full time and I know what that's like. I was afforded with my MSW program to work, um, you know, not have to work and focus totally on school and my program. So I've been on both sides. And like I said, this passion for me to create this channel was from those experiences that I had. I feel like within that student process, there needs to be more development and more support. I'm not saying there's not support out here, but I'm saying that the support could be more, especially for students, because a lot of times, and I'm just being honest, I'm just being honest, sometimes people are really stressed out, like extremely stressed out to the point that they can sometimes have to seek additional services and sometimes are diagnosed with certain, you know, illnesses because of really not being able to balance certain things and life happens. And I'm stress is real, y'all. 
Like, this is truly a passion for me. I don't take this lightly. I truly, truly, truly appreciate each person that comes on and provides insight and feedback to one another. Like I said, you know, I'm here to support. I'm definitely here to support. Janae, what you say? You back? Y'all trying to get me to stay up here on 11 o'clock. <laughs> Janae, I was going to ask you, I wrote it down. You said, you said that you was going to look at American skin and you was doing it for an actual, um, your cultural humility course. Is that what you said? If I got it wrong, let me know. I wanted you to tell me a little bit more about that, Janae, about that course. I think you said it was for a paper or something like you had to write. Yes, please do. I live in MA and Melanie helped me in finding an internship. She is so helpful. Aw, and I can be too with my experience. Yes, because you're very helpful too. Thank you, Rosie. I can learn from both of you as well. Yes, we can learn from each other. We can learn from each other. Janae, I will I am back. <laughs> Welcome back, Janae. <laughs> Rosie, yes, I agree. Melanie, I'm glad you created this space for us social workers. Yes, ma'am. And I have so much more that I want to do with the channel. And Rosie, like I said, I know I said it to you before, but I truly, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate you. You don't know how much, like I said, by you showing up helps me, you know, especially when I was trying to, you know, upload often. And when I started working more in my field, it was very challenging trying to edit videos, y'all. So this is definitely something that I want to continue on doing. So thank you, Rosie, for your patience within the channel. Yep. She said, I'm glad you're not, <laughs> Janae. She said, I'm glad you're not off. But yes, it's a movie called American Skin, and I have to relate to it, um, to bias, oppression, and racism. Yes, Janae, well, I'm so glad to have you on my channel. I'm glad that you're happy to be here. Yeah, but it reminds me of like a cultural competence. Like what time does it... What time does the movie come on? Is it a movie, Janae, about um, the American skin? It reminds me of like implicit bias, implicit bias, where we all have biases. We all have things that we are prone to think sometimes when we just generally um, have a thought about a particular person, population, group of people. We all have that. I think it's sometimes we're shaped based upon the experiences that we had throughout our childhood, throughout our lifespan. And we have to know that. We have to know that. One of the things I do say, too, that the worst type of social worker there is, and, and listen, hear me, in my opinion, the worst type of social worker there is, is the social worker that is not aware. If you're not aware of your biases, if you're not aware of who you are, you're not going to be effective. You know, we have to be able to really dig deep because the work that we do we help so many people. We deal with so many people on different walks of life. Uh, we deal with difficult people. We deal with extremely difficult people. We deal with people dealing with challenges of mental health, trauma, hurt, pain, um, you know, dealing with, you know, aftermaths of natural disasters, pandemics. Like, you you know, the work that we do is pretty, pretty amazing. It really, really is amazing. We have to be very mindful that we stay in tune with ourselves, we have to make sure that we're mindful of self care. But biases is something that when you're in the program, definitely don't shy away from that. Don't shy away from it because it lets you know more about who you are. I know that I was way more open minded as a result of who I was as a person because of my BSW program. Like, welcome all of those aha moments in your program because some of it may challenge the trauma that you had because it did for me. It did for me. So definitely be open to it. Be open to even being vulnerable as a student because you know what? Then you'll be able to relate that to when you have a client that may be hesitant of letting you know their life story or hesitant to let you know like, hey, I'm in your office because I have a need, but I'm really embarrassed, you know? So we have to be, you know, first partakers sometimes, you know, to really be able to understand an experience before we practice an experience, you know? She said, um, hey, Rosa, girl. Yes, I'm glad I'm still here, too. Um, may not be here every Thursday, but when I am, you put a smile on my face with the social work. Oh, Janae, that is so sweet. That is so sweet. Yeah. And it's Tuesdays. I don't know if that was tight, but we're here on Tuesdays, every Tuesday at 830 Eastern Standard Time. 
That's okay. That's okay. I always leave the replays up because I like for people to still be able to have access to the content. Like I said, the only thing I ask for you all to do is definitely subscribe. I really want... Yeah, I don't even have a thousand subscribers. I don't. So I don't know if y'all don't know that, but I really want to get this up here. Like I want to get to a thousand subscribers to really reach people so people can know... And like I said, with the algorithms, with the channel, it's like if you don't have a particular, um, sub, you know, subscribers, they don't send your information out. And I know, like I truly, truly know, like I talk to people all the time about social work. Like I truly love the work that in the profession that um, I'm in. But a lot of times they don't share your content with people if you're not hitting a certain, you know, numer numerical goal or, you know, algorithm. If that numerical goal is not within the algorithm, they limit the access. So I always, like, depend on you all to share, share the content, you know? And I'm growing in my tech skills, too, so I'm not the best in that. I would not tell you that I am. But, yeah, she said, um, I'm glad you're not off. Okay, we already read that part. Um... I'm going to the chat here too. Let's see here. I may not be here every Thursday, but when I'm, I am, you put a smile on my face with the social work experience. I never heard of it. Janae searching up the movie now. I know, Rosie, right? That's what I was saying. I was trying to see about the movie too. She said, yes, it was the movie. Uh, it's on Prime. Just pictured. Um, yes, it is. The movie is on Prime. Just pictured George Floyd, Eric Gardner, and Sandra Bland. It's heartbreaking. So definitely, you all, this movie um, that Janae just um, pretty much made everybody wear is called The American Skin. Janae, if I got it wrong, let me know. But she said it's called The American Skin, and it's on Prime. Yes, it's on Amazon Prime. Um, that's what Janae told Rosie. She said, I mean, Tuesdays. No problem, no problem. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think I want to check it out, too, because I don't think I've ever heard of it. I don't think I ever heard of it, but definitely this is something that we need to be mindful of because the populations that we service and we work with, you know, we work with, with a lot of oppressed and marginalized and vulnerable populations. So a lot of those populations are privy to um, racial discrimination. They are um, privy to a lot of systematic oppression, systematic oppression, a lot of disparity. A lot, a lot of disparity as it relates to race, as it relates to housing, as it relates to access to resources. So different films and different things that sometimes can make us feel uncomfortable. I think it's definitely, definitely necessary because that uncomfortability is somebody else's life. I'm going to repeat that. That uncomfortability is somebody else's life. And when we become more cultural sensitive and competent, and understanding and not assuming that we know a culture, even if we are in the same culture, but lending and leading with understanding what their experiences is and then building upon that, that makes us better practitioners in the work that we do. And the work that we do. She said, yes, I saw his face on the YouTube thumbnail. Okay. Uh, Rose, I wish it was Thursdays. Last lab, one day away from Friday. <laughs> Hey, ladies, I'm checking out to get some late night work. Y'all take care. All right. All right. It was so nice meeting you, Tiffany. It was so, so nice meeting you. Definitely make sure you come back, Miss Thompson. And congratulations on your new supervisor role, too. Thanks so much for checking in. Yeah. But definitely. Janae, when is your paper due? When is your paper due? Yes, have a blessed night, Melanie, and I'll set my calendar for Tuesday. Okay, no problem. It's Tuesdays, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, 8.30 p.m. We talked about BSW versus MSW, six differences between the BSW and MSW programs, and I share my particular grad school experiences. My name is Melanie. I'm your social work development coach. And again, social work sessions are every Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I definitely would say give me at least five minutes sometimes depending on what I'm doing. Um, my schedule is changing right now. It's a little tight for me sometimes. But I don't want to change it because I just started at 8.30. 
So I would definitely be um, transparent with that to say, give me a little, at least 835. If you don't see me exactly at 830, give me at least by 835 to kind of get everything situated. But it's, I try my very best to be prepared for um, our session so that we're, we're not holding up time. And then again, like I said, in this, in, when I have questions and different things, if I have time, I don't mind going over as well. But thank you all so much for watching. You all enjoy the rest of your week. And I will see you next Tuesday. Have a good one. Bye-bye.